There's an undeniable element of fun to conspiracy theories. The thrill that comes with figuring out a riddle or a puzzle is enjoyable, and finding supposed connections is also fun. Why do you think so many content creators leave hints in their overarching narratives that fans can find to unravel a mystery? Harry Potter, Lost, A Song of Ice and Fire, Portal, Arrested Development, all media that contains small hints, innocuous if you aren't looking for them, that detail important plot points later in the story. Even my own videos contain hints about who murdered Thomas S. Commoner. Apparently, at least that's what the rock that was thrown at my window said. So, with how fun that is in fiction, it's unsurprising that conspiracy theories about real life have been around for several thousand years, dating back to ancient Egypt, with both the Nine Bows and the Sea Peoples being explanations of their enemy's organization. When bad things happen to you, sometimes it's easier to think of it as a grand collaboration against you, rather than just bad luck or a personal failure. Of course, though, there are conspiracy theories that end up being correct. The U.S. government really did try to manipulate the weather against the Viet Cong, the Gliwitz incident really was carried out by Nazis posing as Polish nationalists, and the U.S. Public Health Service really pretended to provide health care to poor black men to study the natural history of syphilis. That being said, while theories about governments abusing their people and their neighbors have historical precedent, other theories are held about less likely suspects. Some of them are just silly. Like saying new coke was made purposefully bad as a ploy to sell more old coke, or blaming cryptids for the unfortunate but ultimately natural deaths of livestock. But, unfortunately, much more often, blame for horrible events is laid upon people without power, often those that are victims of said horrible events themselves. Parents of school shooting victims are accused of being crisis actors, Malala Yousafzai has been accused of faking her own being shot to discredit the Taliban, which seems like it would be a superfluous endeavor, and, most famously, Jewish people around the world throughout history are blamed for pretty much everything. Mind you, this isn't apologizing for actual evil carried out by Jewish people, commenters who are about to say that. There have been many Jewish people in positions of power that have abused others, and there are many still doing so today. However, just as the criminal and oppressive members of any group are but outliers, the acts of Jewish criminals don't justify the hate crimes against Jewish people. In the U.S. alone, despite comprising roughly 2% of the population, Jewish individuals were the victims of over half of the hate crimes motivated by religion. Conspiracy theories that Jewish people are bringing in migrants en masse, or controlling the world's finance, or manipulating the U.S. government, translates directly to individual Gentiles believing these conspiracy theories and acting on their fears. But honestly, if you're a person that genuinely believes that Jewish people control the world's finance, despite none of the world's ten most successful companies having Jewish chairmen or CEOs, then you probably aren't going to be persuaded by logic. I had fools in my video on Harry Potter spreading garbage, claiming anti-usury laws in Rome were invented to restrict Jewish bankers, despite the laws dating back to the Roman Republic well before the first Jewish people entered Rome. My point is, facts don't matter to these conspiracy theorists. Yet, there is another group that promotes these theories, individuals that don't necessarily believe them, but do so regardless. Under the guise of either ironic anti-Semitism or supposed ignorance, a lot of leftists and left-leaning Gentiles will reference conspiracy theories about Jewish people uncritically. This is a group I might be able to reach. Maybe not, but at least I'll try. I'll be using two examples, both popular enough to warrant addressing, one from politics and one from entertainment. One covered widely by the media, the other glossed over. Neither, I believe, were necessarily intentionally setting out to be purposefully anti-Semitic, but were entrenched in using or defending anti-Semitic canards and tropes. Firstly, Jeremy Corbyn is leader of the British Labour Party, and has been since 2015. A democratic socialist and staunch leftist, much of what Corbyn has been accused of was not actually anti-Semitic. It is not anti-Semitic, for example, to wish that Palestinian civilians are not murdered, or to condemn Operation Wooden Leg, or to be against other war crimes committed by the Israeli government. Many Jewish activists hold the same views, and to equate anti-murder with anti-Semitism is pretty obviously a horrible thing to do. Are there good and bad ways to express distaste in the acts of the Israeli government? Absolutely. Is being anti-apartheid and anti-war crimes anti-Semitic? Of course not. That said, not all of the claims of anti-Semitism come from anti-Palestinians. In 2011, Corbyn wrote a praising foreword for John A. Hobson's 1902 book, Imperialism, a study. This book alleges that the conspiracy theories that Jewish people are in control of the world's finances, and inherently greedy, and manipulate the world like a puppet, are all true. 
Corbin apologized for this, sort of, eight years later, when he was caught. Upon being asked about his support for the book, he did not rescind it, but rather he stated that he simply did not agree with the, quote, deplorable, end quote, anti-Semitism. In 2012, Corbin voiced support for artist Mayor One, when he complained that his mural, Freedom for Humanity, was to be censored. This mural depicts wealthy individuals playing a game of Monopoly on the backs of oppressed individuals, and has a slogan on it reading, The New World Order is the Enemy of Humanity. The mural's wealthy subjects are portrayed as hunched over, hook-nosed, scraggly-haired, squinty-eyed, and shoddily dressed. You might recognize these as anti-Semitic tropes. Again. Corbin, again, apologized for this, sort of, six years later, when he was caught. He said he thought he was just voicing anti-censorship thought, but didn't really look at the image he was defending. In both cases, I understand that Corbin wants us to believe that he did not intend to promote anti-Semitism. However, intentions mean relatively little. Whether he didn't recognize it or didn't care, he shared and supported materials implying the world is under the control of Jewish people. And his supporters, that are intentionally anti-Semitic, see it as tacit endorsement of their behavior and prejudice, while his supporters that aren't actively trying to be anti-Semitic will often brush it off as if it's nothing. On the other side of the ocean, YouTuber Natalie Wynn, better known as ContraPoints, is popular online for being both eccentric and educational. Though her videos often use expressions of opulence or caricatures of schools of thought as entertainment, her content is largely focused on discussing topics much of her audience may not otherwise find interesting, namely social justice. Being white, a Gentile, relatively non-extremist compared to a lot of other leftists, and obscene, she attracts a lot of viewers that would otherwise hate content promoting tolerance and social justice. And that's not just my viewpoint, either. There are countless think pieces online praising Wynn for her ability to de-radicalize angry young white men. In 2017, though, Wynn produced a video featuring reptilians as bankers controlling the world's finances. Now, like the New World Order and Freemasonry, reptilian conspiracy theories can, potentially, exist outside of anti-Semitism. Still, given their general association with anti-Semitism, I would advise people not use them. However, that's not all that she did. Using these reptilian characters, she created merchandise, promoted with the phrase, David Ick was right. For those unaware, David Ick is a prominent conspiracy theorist, possibly best known for being one of the molders of the modern reptoid conspiracy theory. He's also very anti-Semitic. Wynne, unlike Corbin, did not apologize because she didn't feel like she needed to apologize. She rather defended Ick, saying he wasn't actually anti-Semitic, and neither was she, and any anti-Semitism was interpreted incorrectly. Her reptilians controlling the world thing was a joke, and Ick only hates reptiles, not Jewish people. The thing is, she can claim the former, even if we won't believe it necessarily, but is objectively wrong in the latter. In Ick's theory, there are not just reptilian shapeshifters, but these shapeshifters pretend to be what are known as Jewish people. He supports the anti-Semitic fabricated texts, Protocols of the Elders of Zion, which purports Jewish world domination. Simply saying Jewish people aren't actually people but reptiles doesn't make it okay. It just puts up a bare-bones deflection. If I said that we should kill all dogs, you might think I was anti-dog. But if I said we should kill all dogs, not because I hate dogs, but because they aren't actually dogs, but rather demons in convincing suits, if you were a leftist looking for a joke, you might promote me for a laugh. I'm not saying that Wynne actually believes Jewish people are actually reptilian shapeshifters. In fact, she expresses that this is just used for a joke. But again, her followers that believe the theory view this as tacit support, and those that don't will defend her. The idea that any form of bigotry becomes harmless when used as a joke is a common one, and in the cases where members of a marginalized community are reclaiming and ridiculing the oppression that they face, I can understand that. But when you aren't part of a group and the joke is indistinguishable from the actual bigotry, you're playing a dangerous game. Suppose, and this is very generous, only 1% of Wynne and Corbin's fans are anti-Semitic. That's still thousands and thousands of people who can feel emboldened by supposedly innocent figureheads. Wynne and Corbin can dodge responsibility and pretend that they apologized all they want. They have supported and promoted anti-Semites. But I don't pretend that I'll reach either one of them. But to my fellow Gentiles viewing this video, I implore you, when joking about conspiracy theories or supporting controversial art, don't be a pawn or a fool. Instead, know what you are promoting. Be discerning when making jokes, and choose to treat anti-Semitic canards as they deserve to be treated, with disdain.